Piero Rito Bacay. I think something like uh, good morning, everyone. More or less. Uh, dear authorities and colleagues and friends, first of all, I would like to thank all those who have been uh, do able this uh, event, no? especially to my good friend Faidas that has made possible this magnificent event, and with it, the opportunity they have given to us to be here with you and explain the international, this fantastic international conference, the model for the future, which I have to say it's a lovely name. Uh, because I don't know if the modern future or the future is in the modern, but in any case, I think it's quite exciting. And thereby, and, and therefore, uh, the opportunity to me to speak and to explain what is the meaning of the Madrid document. Uh, the Madrid document began in 2009 as a dream of the group of colleagues who discussed it in Sydney in an unforgettable conference entitled Our Unlocked 20th Century Heritage. And it, is, it was uh, really uh, unforgettable because the 20th century most of the times is unloved. And this is something we need to know. It's, it's, a, it's a really thing. And we decided to work on a document to set the criteria for the identifications, the preservations, the interventions, and the management of the architectural heritage of the 20th century heritage. Understanding that was in many ways a different heritage, with features, casuistry, and new meanings that made, it, made us think that we need to establish some new criteria for this kind of heritage. Um, Uh, and, and, and this is how a working group of 20 colleagues was formed, some, uh, some, of how, some of who are here, like Vladimir, our friend Miki, who is uh, with us. And two years later, in Madrid, in June of 2011, presented the International Assembly of more 300 people, experts, a draft to discuss and to approval as the Madrid document. Well, after three days of discussion, the Madrid document was finally uh, approved with the support of the Spanish authorities. And later on, the Madrid document has been presented to the General Assembly of the ECOMOS in Paris in 2011 and, and, and afterwards in Florence in 2014. And in both assembly, being the suggested of a, of a resolution which recommended its dissemination and uh, continue the process uh, of its acceptance as a doctrinal text of the ECOMOS. Now, nine years, uh, nine years later, uh, the reality is that the Madrid document has been translated into 12 languages, English, Spanish, and French, Russian, Germany, Italian, Portuguese, Finnish, Hindi, Chinese, Basque, and Catalan. And now they are working on the Japanese, Swedish, Arab, and Greek. So, by this, I think we need these three languages of the Baltic countries. So, this is your turn. Um, in, in this document, they apply, they apply for the recommendation in many cities, in many cities, uh, protecting the heritage, and it is in use in great cities as New York or Sydney or Shanghai, but not in Madrid. This is things that happen, but uh, probably sometimes in the place where the document uh, begins is the place where nobody nobody uses it. Um, but the Madrid document has, uh, for us, has three important questions. Yesterday, a colleague will tell us how, in any conference, he begins with, with an introduction with three questions and with the conclusion. In in, the, in, in this occasion, I am I have also three questions: uh, which, why, and how. Uh, which is the heritage of the 20th century that we must protect? Why we must employ new approaches to protect this heritage? And how should we protect and intervene in this heritage? All of them are important issues that the Madrid document aims to resolve, proposing and recommending criteria for the identification, 
pre preservation, intervention, and management. So let's see the first question, which is uh, which, which is the, the which, which is the heritage of the 20th century that we must protect. The 20th century has left us a youngest heritage of history, undervalued and very unknown, in which just a few well-known architectural examples have been recognized, where the rest of the heritage is not considered as an important to preserve. Being especially vulnerable, therefore, is an urgent need to recover their cultural significance. These are some uh, slides, uh, images from Madrid, uh, heritage of the beginning of the century, but of course we can find it in any, in any city of all of us. Um, you will see the examples of Madrid, but perhaps we could also put the same examples in Kaunas. No? Um, the 20th century has placed as a youngest heritage, no, sorry, the protection of can only be conceived as uh, for a global perspective without forgetting those architectural that even being simple make up the urban landscape of the city, as says the first article of the Venice chapter of 1964, that says that the most work, the work of over time had, that have a key of cultural significance are also historical monuments. And we, have, we don't have to forget also the convention that Mr. Turner has uh, before speak about, the convention that proposed the Convention of the World Heritage, where is defined clearly the different considerations of cultural heritage, and from which I would like to highlight that the cultural heritage are the groups of buildings, separated or not, whose architectural and integration unit in the landscape gives them the outstanding universal value from the point of view of history, art, and science. And what we have never have to or to forget is that the oblivion, the indifference, and the intolerance become the greatest context that an enlightened population can be lost into into his history, his roots, and his heritage. I think the destroy of uh, three thousand years of uh, Syrian uh, writers is something that we must try uh, not to allow. The next uh, question is uh, why? Why we must employ these approaches, these new approaches to protect the heritage of the 20th century? And uh, I have to say that after studying the good examples that we can see just walking through any of the cities, and of course uh, in these counties, I am sure that the most of them we can feel it, how they, they have followed the same process. Firstly, fixing the approaches and process necessary in an intervention. Secondly, defining the change of use as a way to recover its architectural and cultural significance. And thirdly, highlighting the role to play with the uh, authorities of every country as main guarantors of its history. All of them not only have recovered the value of the monument, but also have created have re recovered the value of the monument and so far created an economical, social and cultural wealth in its surrounding environs, which guarantees that investing in heritage, and I think this is important, has an environment, uh, environment which guarantees that investing in heritage has an attractive economic benefit and at the same time becomes an important contribution to the social cultural development of any city. Um, you can see here what we have tried to don't get allowed. The, the monuments in risk uh, in Madrid, you can see this example of a fantastic concrete building that has been demolished, or is going to be demolished. But you have this other building uh, from the beginning of the century, it's an it's a insurance company, uh, that they have decided to demolish the interior of the building just keeping the facade as uh, if in a theater uh, or something like that, no? where the interior and the exterior has nothing to be uh, in between the, them. No? Another example is the theater in uh, the Bossart in, in San Sebastian, which is uh, a, a building very well known 
and is also going to be demolished now. So, uh, what ECOMOS uh, needs to be sure is that the rights of uh, the right of protecting heritage that is going to become a human right, we have to defend it. And the right to have the authenticity of testimony of cultural heritage is respect as an expression of cultural identity with the humanity. This is one of the rights that ECOMOS believes on. Another one is that the right to a better understanding of our heritage and that of other heritages. And the third one is the right to rational and appropriate use of heritage. ECOMOS consider that all these rights must be respected in order to preserve and enrich the world with preserving its heritage and cultural diversity, and it, this was the Madrid document pretended to do. Uh, but in most of the 20th century um, architectural heritage, we can find the following aims. The new and very different uses of modern buildings. The flexibility and frequent changes in them. Their inevitable extensions. The enormous diversity of buildings, materials, and the problems of maintenance and preservation. The closeness of this heritage on time to us. And all these reasons are some of the most obvious questions that we think make it different from older heritages. The new restoration techniques, sustainability reasons, more efficient technologies, and many other factors point to a new and a different way of looking at the heritage. And of course, a different way of preserving, creating and need to establish new criteria for interventions in the architectural heritage of the 20th century, uh, based on the already well-known char charters, while they solve the problems of our era. And this is what the Madrid document recommend. The third question is, is uh, how? how? How should we protect uh, and intervene in the heritage of this 20th century? Um, as a good, as a, a, all good interventions that we can observe all over the world are quite diverse. But in all of them, there are some common aspects which are a priority and I would like to highlight it. Without which, we can hardly respect the value of the site and with which different languages and change of use or extensions always respectfully can be done without losing its cultural significance, which is something but we have to be very careful with that. These aspects are the interventions criteria, the process of any project, and the author sensibility. Talking about the criteria, the, the substitutions of materials adapting to the new function, respect to the form, the new languages, etc., are just a few of the questions with a special controversy. All of them apply in any interventions and this demand the urgent need to establish a greater criteria. And it is here where the Madrid document is again justified an important international contribution to the proportion of heritage that established the approaches for identification, conservation, intervention and management of the 20th century architectural heritage. The next, uh, the next step is the process that everyone needs to, to, to have when you're working in heritage. The most appropriate proposals with adding the new modern technologies and sustainability languages also add value to the monument without losing its cultural significance. The survival of the, mon of the monument must also make it compatible with innovation and with the, with the new use. The alternative to this is the degradation. And the third one is the most difficult for me, which is the sensibility any uh, architect who is going to work in heritage needs to have. And uh, if they don't have this sensibility, in my opinion, they cannot work in heritage. And someone has to say that. And I suppose the people who has to say that is the administration that are going to approve or not the proposed and someone is going to do. But they have to have very clear the difference in between a good, a good proposal and a bad proposal. 
And if this proposed doesn't have the criteria, it has followed a good process, and it has not enough sensibility, it cannot be approved. And this has to be clear. Uh, Goya, the painter, Spanish painter, used to say something I think is really it's a nice phrase, no? Like, the time paints. So you have to be very careful when you are acting in a heritage and, for example, you clean a concrete. Be careful what you are going to clean, because perhaps you are cleaning the painting of the artist. For me, the Tate Gallery, the Tate Modern Gallery in London, a uh, work of Herzog and Demeron, should be or can be probably the best example, where we can see how the criteria has been well implied in a good process and with an extraordinary sensibility, where the new and the old parts of the site can coexist as, coexist as a good example. Um, if you think of the color, of the material, of the geometry, of the proportion in between the extension of the monument and the monument, and how both can 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 live uh, can live in the same in the same site, I think is really a fantastic example that we should uh, we should look very often to see, which is what we have to do when we work in heritage. So now talking about the Madrid document that I am not going to read, but I am just going to read the aim of the document. It's a short document. It has nine articles. I'm going to read just the title of the articles, and, uh, and I hope you will be able to, to, to read it in your own, on the web page or in other many places. No? Uh, the aim of the document says, the obligation to conserve the heritage of the 20th century is as important as our duty to conserve the significant heritage of previous eras. More than ever, the architectural heritage of this century is at, is it at risk from a lack of appreciation and care. Some, oh, some has already been lost and more is in danger. It is a living heritage and it is essential to understand, define, interpret and manage it well for future generations. The Madrid document seeks to contribute to the appropriate and respectful handling of this important period of the architectural heritage. While recognizing existing heritage conservation documents, the Madrid document also identifies many of the issues, especially involved in, other cons in, in, in the conservation of architectural heritage. Yet, yet while it spe specifically applies to architectural heritage, it also its forms many of the concepts but, but may equally apply to other types of 20th century heritage. The document is intended for all those involved in heritage conservation process. Uh, the first article is the most obvious one. Uh, it's talking about the advance, the knowledge, understanding, and significance. It's important to identify and assess the cultural significance of the place in which we are going to work. Uh, so, the second, the second article uh, means is talk, talk about uh, to apply appropriate conservation planning and methodology. It has also three or four, seven points, and is something uh, also very obviously and easy to understand. The third one is talking about the research, the technical aspects of the 20th century architectural heritage. And I would like to read the, the point two, two that says that the application of a standards building codes needs flexibility and innovation approaches to ensure appropriate heritage conservation solutions. When we are working in heritage, not only in the 20, but in, of course in the 20, we need to be very flexible with the rules because if not, it's impossible. And probably if we have to continue what the rule says, we will destroy the monument. So this is a discussion that we have to have with the people involved in rules, but we have to have clear that it has to be flexible. The, the Article 4 uh, is talking, is begin to talk about manner change to conserve the cultural significance. Acknowledge 
and manage pres pressures for change with which are constants. Uh, and the point for one talks about whether as a result of human interventions of environment conditions managing change in a essential part of the conservation process to maintain cultural significance, authenticity and integrity. Three of them are really important to be conserved. The fifth architect of the article is talking about the managed change of sensibility. Uh, sensibility is something uh, that we need to use in, always in heritage and of course in the 20th century heritage also. No? There are two uh, other points that can explain more. And then we go to the article 6 that says that insurance the ensures of respectful approaches to additions and interventions. Uh, this heritage of the 20th century, uh, most of times, most of the times, is going to be extended because the new use recommend to a new space uh, and probably will be extended on top, on the side, uh, behind, as in this example, both done by two good architects, the one in the left is Jean Dupel, the one on the right is Levinsky. And I think we could perfectly agree in which of both is a good solution and which one is not. Um, but additions need to be respect to the cultural significance of the heritage site. And I'm afraid the, the one in the right is not exactly very respect. The new intervention should also be designed to take into account the existing character, scale, form, seating, materials, colors, patina, and details. And here you can find another two uh, examples. One is from Rafael Moneo, which is an extension of the Bank of Spain. And another one is, um, is the Mercado in Barcelona, which has put uh, Rafael Tagliati in uh, a new cupboard that I don't think is very respectful uh, with the significance of this uh, 20th century market. Uh, the seventh article talks about the respect of the authenticity and integrity in heritage site. If we lose these two things, we will lose the monument. So, again, we have to be very careful in what uh, always we do uh, trying to keep the respect, the authenticity, and the integrity of the heritage site in which we are working. The Article 8 talks about the environment and sustainability and gives the considerations to environmental sustainability. Care, the care must be taken to achieve an appropriate balance between environmental sustain, sustainability and the conservation of the cultural significance. We have to find a point in common between both. And finally, the Article 9 uh, talk us and recommend uh, to promote and celebrate the 20th century architect architectural heritage with the wider community. I think uh, it's very important to, to make a dissemination of, uh, of the the Madrid document as a good document, as an interesting document in between all the, all the students and professionals in every country, so uh, can, um, can contribute to the education of people who is going to work in heritage and who is, and who is going to decide in the, the propose they will have to evaluate in heritage. Finally, in the document we have a glossary of uh, of different uh, words because when, when you are uh, talking in different languages you have to be very careful in between one word or other. No? For example, the site or the place is not the meaning in Spanish or in English. So we have to define uh, which is the meaning of both for both of us. And the same with attributes, authenticity, <laughs> components, conservation, cultural significance, intangible values, integrity, interventions, maintenance, or diversity. Um, but the Madrid document prepared <coughs> by this International Scientific Committee of the 20th Century Heritage of ECOMOS contributes to the proposed and respectful management of this important cultural heritage, in spite 
by chapters and already accepted international documents that identifies specific issues related to the conservation of architectural heritage. In all its manifestations, is a documented address to all those involved in the different process of the heritage conservation, although primary architects, government authorities, and of course, all the students that probably are here in this, in this uh, room and that need to uh, be educated in the, in the principles of the preservation of heritage, and especially of the 20 heritage, because it is more close to us and the more, uh, probably the more, uh, the, the, the one is more in risk. So we have to be very, very attention, and the students, I think, need to get in love of this, uh, of this uh, heritage and begin to work on it with a lot of passion. Uh, in, the last, in the last assembly we, we had last December in ECOMOS in, uh, in New Delhi, we decided to extend this document uh, to try to include not only the architectural heritage of the 20th century, but why not another uh, heritage like the landscape, uh, the industrial, industrial um, landscape, or the historic uh, centers uh, of the cities, and also trying to have made to try to find the difference uh, and to understand uh, what kind of, uh, of, of, of uh, heritage we have, to, we have to protect when it is very close to us. Uh, when the monument has perhaps 20 years, it's much more difficult to find the, 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 to find the value of the monument that could represent a monument. So we have to be very, very uh, careful with that. And just to find out, I would like to finish making clear that the need, the need to establish the necessary canals that allow a deep debate between the public administration and society that guarantees our cultural heritage protections and the preservation with the necessary open mind, saving both the work and the historical records, and says, and say, says the Article 3 of the Venice chapter. But without a doubt, in the end, it is us, the professionals, who have to act, and therefore I would like to remember how to intervene in our heritage. It's necessary to have a clear criteria, to follow a process, and to do it with the necessary sensibility. Thank you very much.